Hi there, I'm doing a video response to ZJ's request to Wicca, which I thought was very good. It was very well researched. Uh, I'm going to talk about it from an insider's point of view because I was in a Wiccan coven for about five to six years. And how, what he researched wasn't wrong, but how we interpret it was a little differently. And I don't, and I think a lot of people may interpret it this way. Our, our group was, it was a core group of about six to 10 people. Sometimes we got up to 13. Sometimes we went over 13. Uh, most covens recommend you be about 13 because otherwise it would be unmanageable to have that many people because of just how the structure, just how they're structured. And this, uh, our group was for a while very, very close and eventually imploded and uh, through a whole messy drama, which I'm glad that I had missed. I'd already dropped out by that point. But anyway, the point being, or the uh, points I wanted to make were about theology. And in Wicca, the god and the goddess are seen as being equal. They're supposed to have the masculine and feminine divinity. And in theory, the priest and the priestess should be equal. But how it actually worked out, especially in our coven, was that the priestess was in charge. And you know, it's like, you know, the god and the goddess are equal, but the priestess is a little, the, priest, the goddess and the priestess are a little bit better. And the job of the uh, priest was mainly to back her up. The priest was the priestess's husband, which is not at all unusual in covens at all, at least heterosexual ones. And this was, uh, and we would only have like two or three men at a time in any, in any given point. We had, uh, when we did have enough men, the, um, with the hierarchy worked like that. We had the priestess, we had the priest, and we had a maiden at all times who was like the priestess in training. She's the third in command and her job is to be, she's considered clergy and she can do weddings and, fee, you know, and everything that the priestess can do. And whenever we could have one, we had a summoner, which was a male person whose basic job was to get, make sure everyone showed up on time and knew what they were supposed to be doing. It was like a secretary. Uh, so it was kind of a role reversal from most religions and definitely from everyday life because the women were in charge and we knew we were in charge and we, you know, weren't shy about mentioning it either. Uh, another thing that would come up, there is a very popular book in Wicca called The Spiral Dance by Starhawk. And we would do guided meditations from that book every week. We would all lie on the floor of their basement apartment with the cats walking over us and try to meditate to this tape she'd made from it. And uh, the tape goes, you're told, uh, it, there's a line in it where it says, breathe deep from your belly, from your womb. And I can't really imagine how that must have been like for the two or three people involved in this who did not have a womb. <laughs> it had to be a little strange now that I think about it. Uh, there is, it's, it can be very female centric. We would try to do things with male energy and, you know, and do when we had enough men around, we would try to do uh, various male rituals, but they were completely overwhelmed and we really kind of took it over. Because we could, and it's actually sort of encouraged. Uh, that was the, that's the main theological difference from what how it's perceived and how it's actually practiced. Uh, another thing is that Wiccans tend to be, and I hope I hope most other people in, uh, involved in Wicca don't have to deal with this, but we had to do it several times. There, there you would get in spats with other covens. There would be words said, you would get, you know, they, they, these are called witch wars. And you go up against some other group who you felt were doing it wrong. And so uh, there is a very definite chance of Wicca becoming fundamentalist within the next 20 years because a lot of groups don't get along. And another thing, there's a, a fair amount of snobbery. There's what's called fluffy bunny Wiccans, which means people who they think aren't doing enough reading or are not serious enough. And another thing you got to keep in mind is we're basically making this up. Uh, Wicca is a uh, is a religion that basically stole from every other pa every pagan group they could think of, from you know ancient Egyptian religion to voodoo. So, and but everyone says this. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, you're doing this wrong." Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. So how you know, like I said, there's no governing body, and 
so it's a very it's a very interesting religion to be in. It's a very strange religion to be in because, and we were very serious about it. Especially we wanted to make a good media impression. We used to do we used to go on television. We go on thing. One one memorable time we went and we spoke to a group of teachers in uh, rural Alabama and tried to explain that Wicca was not Satanism. And which I still think was a good thing to do on a religious freedom front, but I don't know. I, I guess we were effective. We tried to be effective, but we weren't all. I don't know how how good representatives some of us were. Um, what happened eventually was the group split up in the messiest way possible. I don't want to get into the personal details, but it was really rough, especially on some people. And. Uh, I had, like I said, I'd already quit by that point, and I had become really disillusioned. Even when I was in the coven, my nickname there was the Skeptic Pagan, because I didn't believe in a lot of things that they believed in. I didn't believe in the concept of a soulmate, which as is, which in Wicca means that you reincarnate with the same person throughout different lifetimes and fall in love with them again and so you essentially marry the same person over and over and I couldn't think of anything more boring in my life <laughs> I was like I was like you can have so many different relationships with people in one life why would you have a relationship with the same person the same way in every in every incarnation that's just wrong <laughs> I guess I'm not very monogamous <laughs> and uh so I was already so that was one thing I didn't believe in. I didn't believe in a lot of the woo-woo stuff that some people in our coven believed in. And by this I mean Loch Ness monster, alien abduction, uh, various things like that. I wasn't really, I never had, I never had a real spiritual experience except maybe a few times. Well, I mean I did have a few, but I never had a supernatural experience. Never saw a ghost. Never saw an elf lord. Never saw a lot of the things that a few people in our group claimed to have seen regularly. I don't know if they were making it up or if they needed medication. I'm jury's still out. Uh, but that was that was how the group went. And then after I after the group after I left and after the group fell apart, I still had my altar set up, which is where you do all your magic. This is your table where you have your altar and you have everything set up. You have your god statue. You have your goddess statue. You have your athame, which is your ritual knife which is not used to cut anything or to sacrifice anything, just by the way. It's basically you just use it to uh, direct energy. It's not even, mine wasn't even sharpened. I never sharpened it. And so I had all my stuff there. And then after about, I remember one point, I think it was about 2005, after I realized that I had not prayed for six months. I hadn't done anything. I'd never done a spell. And I'd had a really bad year. And I never once asked for any sort of help from the gods. So I took my altar down. I decided if I wasn't using it, and if I didn't seem to believe in it anymore, it was gone. I took it all down, stuffed it in a box, and shoved it in my closet. And after that, the uh, transition from being doubting to agnostic to atheist happened at about warp speed. Because it's like once I freed myself from that, it was, it was over. And then all the books I had bought and all those crappy books I got, and most of them were pretty stupid about what I packed them all off and I gave them away or gave them to my mom. I don't know what I did with them really. And I kept the ones that I thought had some sociological impact like Drawing Down the Moon just because that was a great book on real sociology really. But everything else was gone and after that I never really looked back. I actually have a lot of trouble with some stuff that is just even vaguely new agey because I'm like once I give up on something I'm done. I'm like oh, you know they'll be they'll say oh this is you know, it's like, you should try this or some sort of natural healing for your bipolar disorder. I'm like, oh, stop. <laughs> Just give me medication and shut up. Uh, so it's uh, it's pretty much done for me, and I don't see myself ever going back. But that's just how I looked at it, and that was my personal experience.